Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Let's continue with our episode. In the previous episode, we have worked on the authentication mechanism of Go. And we have applied all this authentication pattern for our register and the login stuff, right? And we have we have seen how we can get the profile with the help of the, the authentication token also. In this episode, we are going to work on how we can verify our user with the help of some kind of verification code. And those verification codes, we will be using some kind of third party library to send the uh, notifications or maybe a form of OTP to user mobile. So why exactly we need to verify user's mobile? Because at the later stage, user will become a seller also, right? While it's, it's come to uh, sell something, then definitely you should have to verify your contact information so at least buyer can reach up to you and uh, they, you can sell your product efficiently. So those are the things we are going to cover. Um, yeah, uh, this is not necessarily has to be verified or it's need, it's need to do in the such a way. In the normal e-commerce, you no need to do all the stuff because in normally uh, while we are dealing with the e-commerce platform, then there's some kind of vendor will be there where they're selling the product, only customer can directly reach to the vendor. So this is a one single point of contact where, where we are doing, all right? But in this case, this is not a kind of like uh, directly B2C, it's called C2C, where a customer can become seller, customer can become buyer also. So because of all those interactions, we need to uh, we need to continue with this business pattern, right? So this, this kind of business logic we need to apply. All right, then let's dive into the source code, right? So here inside this user handler, let's try to make a plan. First of all, we will going to get the verification code, right? So at least we can verify the user mobile, right? So that is, as I said, we need to verify because the user will become a seller also, right? And secondly, while it comes to deliver the product, then definitely the mobile number is essential, right? And that's why we need to verify the user profile, right? Then we're going to create the profile because why we need to create the profile? So there are some of the informations going to be needed while it comes to sell the product, right? And eventually for, uh, for buying the product also, because you need to add the address, et cetera, et cetera. And so first thing we are going to handle all these routes, right? Then we are going to handle the become seller part. Then we are going to deep dive into the product part, right? Before adding the card and orders, because without product, we cannot uh, go ahead to the add to card, right? So in that section, we are going to deep dive a little bit in system design, going back a little bit, just to try to understand the flow, right? But before uh, moving forward to that part, I think this is the right way to uh, accomplish this verification part first, right? So let's try to do this one, right? All right, then let's go to the get verification code part, right? So here we need to generate a verification code and we need to add it in the user profile. So at least we can verify uh, correctly the uh, user, right? So that is the part we are going to do. So let's go to verification code handler. And can you see here, we are, we are not giving back anything, right? So in this case, uh, we need to grab the current user. So let's try to grab the current user first, right? So let's grab the user. User will be our handler dot service dot out dot get current user, right? Perfect. So get current user, we need to pass the context also. As we uh, in the last episode, we have experience in the profile. You can see the same thing, right? We are we're grabbing the current user. So right now we got the authenticated user, but still, what we can do, we can we need to get the uh, verification code also. Somehow we need to create the verification code. code and an update, update to user profile in DB, right? So this is the part we need to do. So how we can do that? So let's go to uh, uh, the service, right? So here in the service, user service. So do we have any functions to do that, right? I think, yeah, we have one, right? So let's go here in the get verification code from our user service, right? Here, here you can find it out in the yeah in the service in the service inside the service directory go to user service.go and here this function we are going to add a couple of codes here so here in the get verification code function from our user service first of all let's try to check like if if user already verified that is we need to check it out then let's generate generate the verification code Right. Generate the verification code. 
right? Then the update verification code, or maybe you can say update user. Update. Wait. Right? Or we can say directly update user only, right? Update user. Then if everything is going well, then return the verification code. Right. So these are the things we need to get it done here in the get verification code, right? So first of all, let's try to check it out whether our user is verified or not, right? So in this case, right before this get verification code function, we're going to add one more function. This is going to be our uh, function, right? Func. And here we will say uh, our user service is going to be OS. And we will put a kind of function name. This is going to be is verified user is, is verified user, right? Then here we will pass our int as id. Uh, this is going to be id to int, int, and we will return bool, right? Boolean. So by default, let's say let's return false, right? So here inside this is verified user function, let's try to grab our current user, right? So uh, current user, right? And error. And we can grab it from our repository, uh, service.repository, because already we have added the pine user by ID, right? So grab this function from here, right? And we are passing our ID here, and we can see we have our current user and error. So in this case, we are not going to uh, directly return this false, all right? So let's do one thing. Error, we will check it out if error not error equal equal nil. And current user current user verified, right? So if both the conditions are true, then we will check, uh, we will see like uh, the verify is true, right? That that means the user is like this. But second condition, if user is already verified, then both the condition will return true, right? And if it is one of them is is not there, let's say if we have error or if we if if we have user uh, current user is not verified, then it will return false. So we can get, get the verified user conditions from there, right? So let's try to implement right here in get verification code. So we will say if s dot is verified user, let's say e dot id, right? And in this case, we will check like if it is verified is true, then return, return zero and nil, right? That's, that's going to be okay. Now let's try to generate the verification code. So how we can generate the verification code? So let's go to out here in the auth handler, handler here, uh, in do we have one function right here? Uh, no, we don't have any one. So let's try to add one function right here, which is going to provide some kind of the authentication code from here. Because while it comes to uh, provide some kind of authentication, right, or code or verify, etc., it should have to be, we should have to keep it in here in authentication uh, package right here. So here inside the helper in authentication, in auth.go. Right, so let's try to add that one. Here, what we're going to say, like func, and receiver will be auth, it's going to be a. Then we are going to say the name of the function. This is going to be generate, generate code, right? Then it will return two type of data. First one going to be int, and second one going to be error, right? Error, right. So in this case, let's return return zero and nil for a while, right? So where we will generate this uh, code because this is not only one single place where we are dealing with the code. So in that case, we need to generate some kind of random numbers and we will provide it back. So now let's go to auth here and let's try to create one utility file here, right? This is going to be some kind of utility dot go, right? So here inside this utility dot go, let's try to create one function. This is going to be fun and random numbers. This is going to be public function, right? And here we will put a kind of length, right? Length will be int, and it will return int and error. Perfect. So let's try to return, return zero and nil, right? So now let's go here in auth. So now here in this auth, let's return something from here. This is going to be our uh, random random numbers. 
and in the land we are we are putting six right here right we could have added these random numbers front and right here in auto pile as well as right but this is not a good practice at all because sometimes we need to access these random numbers from somewhere else also as an example generate a kind of order number right or maybe card number or anything else or maybe transaction number right so in that case again we need to access this odd right so that is the route we don't want right so it has to be separated in the utility file so where we can access the these random numbers from anywhere of the of our program right so that's why we are just keeping it right here all right so enough talk so let's try to add some code here so here in the random numbers let's try to grab the d numbers first const numbers will be our all the numbers as an example two three four five six seven eight nine zero right then we are going to add some code quickly then i'll make you understand what exactly i did right there right Perfect, so let's try to understand what we did here. So we have created a string that is called numbers, all right? So where we have added all the numbers here. So one to nine and zero, right? And we have created one empty buffer of length, whatever the length we have added as an example uh, from here in, in the odd, if you go to odd, you can see we have created a length of six, right, buffer. And this is the same thing we did here. You can see the buffer is created a size of six, right? then we are just to try to read the buffer here right so which is called rand re read the buffer right so randomly we are going to read the buffer from here and then we will check like whether we have any error or not right so it says like there is no any error Th that is perfectly fine if any error then we are returning zero and error then we are creating a number length right so what is the length of the number it, it says like number of length it's from one to to nine and zero right this is the this is the length of our number so here in the for loop can you see like i is starting from zero and i is less than the length so this is the length we are passing it right so that means we are we're trying to adding the six numbers right here right so this is going to be insert from index zero till 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 five right which is potentially there will be six digits and we are trying to grab the d numbers from here from this uh, number string right from whatever the length is there and we are using some kind of module operator by the number of length so at least we can get some kind of randomized number there right so eventually we are adding all this number here and we are returning uh, all these numbers to a kind of converting to a kind of integer right so if you if you go to strconv and uh, atio then you can see it is returning integer and error this is perfectly complying the return type here so eventually you can say we are uh, returning we are creating a bunch of numbers here random numbers of length of six or seven whatever the length we are passing it right there let's grab the generated code here right so here code and error and will be it will become from our auth and generate code perfect so right now we have our generated code right so let's try to update in the user right so in this case what we need to do first of all we need to construct one kind of user here this is going to be our user user and will be domain domain dot user right this is going to be uh, a kind of struct and where we need to add some kind of uh, information here so let's go to the user model here and you can see we have our expiry and we have our code also all right these are the two things we need to update right so how we can do that let's go to user service let's try to add some code here this is going to be expiry current time plus 30 minutes right this is what we need to do so let's grab the time uh, dot now and here we will be going to add the duration this is going to be 30 minutes time dot minutes minutes right and we need to provide the code also so code will be our current code right this is the code which is we are adding right there right and after that what we need to do maybe we can check it out here also if if any kind of error is there then if error will be there then we can just return zero and nil also right or maybe we can we can throw some kind of error also whatever the error we can get it like 
uh, error, not be able to generate the code or something, we can throw it from here. Right now, we need to update this user, all right? So we have our user domain, right? So let's go to repository, right? Let's go to user repository. Let's close the rest of all the stuff. All right, in the user repository. So do we have anything for update user? Yes, we have the update user also, right? So in this case, let's say, let's go to update user here. So right now here in the update user, we can see, we can see here, we're fairly updating all the informations, whatever we are going to pass it here, right? By that specific user ID, right? So let's try to go ahead here in the user service and try to update our user. So here, let's try to update the user. So first parameter, we don't care about it, right? So let's try to skip it. And second parameter going to be error. And we are going to say uh, s dot repo and update user, right? Update user. And in this case, we are going to pass to the uh, user ID. That is, we have accepted from here, uh, e dot domain dot user, right? So from this domain, right? From this entity, we can just pass it on just like e dot ID. And second parameter going to be our domain. This is going to be our user from here, right? So right now we can see we have our updated user result. So let's try to evaluate if we have any error. Error, then do we have anything right here, right? It is saying domain and user. That's perfectly fine. So we will say like here, if the error not equal nil, then we will pass return an error. This error will be our some kind of error. Um, error new text. Error new text is going to be our error. Uh, and those two, um, and those two. Update, update. So right now you can see it is giving error, right? Why it is giving error? Because the error object already we have just created here, right? So that's why we cannot redeclare really once more here, right? So that, that means if the error will be there, right? So you can see this error is already in the inside this function scope. So it is already there and it's going to evaluate right here if any error will be there. Then again, we can reuse that specific error object right here rather than create a new one. So this is the way exactly it is uh, efficiently handling the memory uses, right? So let's try to uh, use like this way. So now you can see the error has gone. Perfect. So now if everything is going well and our, we are perfectly able to update the uh, user also, right? Along with the code and expiry, then let's try to return the code here. Perfect, perfect. So now we have added the verification code here, but only one thing is we need to add it here. That is going to be send the send SMS, right? So that is the part we are going to handle uh, shortly. But uh, as soon as we are successfully updated this code here in the database, right? Then we need to send that SMS to the user mobile also, right? That is what we need to do, right? Right now we are ready to use this get verification code function, right? And we are going to implement the SMS, but uh, as of now, let's try to complete the flow first. Then we are getting back to, to this, uh, the third party package, right? So let's go back to the user handler. And here you can see we are grabbing the client user, right? So somehow we need to pass it on to our service. So let's try to do that. So how we can do that? Let's try to grab the code and error. And we are going to say h dot h dot SPC and we will say get verification code. So here, simply we need to pass to this user domain, right? So let's try to pass this user. Perfect. So now we will say if there is any kind of error, right? If any kind of error, then we will pass uh, some kind of error message here. This is going to be um, internal error, right? Status internal error, then message will be, we will say something like, and if everything is going well, then this code, we are going to send it back. But in the real reality, once we are implementing this uh, send message, right, or SMS package, then we are not going to pass this code anymore. But as of now, we don't have any uh, SMS integration so far. So let's try to uh, add pass this code to, to our, our postman. So at least we can uh, get verify our user without receiving SMS, right? So let's try to do that. So here we will say message is fine. Then data will be data will be our code. Perfect. So now now we can go ahead and test it out this get verification code, right? So let's try to spin our server here. Make server. Our server is running on port 9000, right? So let's go to Postman here and let's try to do login. So in the last time we have added some kind of a different password. So let's go ahead, check it out. Ah, oh, this is the correct password, right? One, two, six. 
So let's go here and remove all the numbers from there. Right? Let's try to do login. And this is our login. And we can see uh, this is our uh, get verification code, user verify. And authentication token we are in reading from our auth plan, right? Let's try to send a request. Now let's go to the database table and we will check it out whether this code is exist in our database or not, right? So if you go here in the database right here and select the users table and we can see clearly this one, can you see? We have our expiry, we have our code and expiry. This is our code and this is our expiry and verified is false, right? And next time if we, if we try to generate a new one, you can see this code has been changed, right? And indeed the expiry also is going to be changed at all, right? So if you're going to refresh right here, refresh, can you see it's, it's, it's changed, right? Perfect. Then what we are gonna do here, if you go to source code, then you can see like once this uh, verification code is verified, right? You go to user service, and if it is already verified, then it will not going to return anything, right? So here maybe we can return some kind of error, error.txt, we will say like user already verified, right? Right now we have our verification code, right? Let's go to the verify handler, right? So here we are going to add some code to verify the user. So first of all, let's try to add some code here. Let's try to grab the uh, existing user, this one, right? Add it here. So we have our current user, right? So right now we have our current user. So we need to create some kind of request, right? Request to accept the verification code. How we can do that? Let's go to the DTO file, right? So here in the user request DTO, let's try to add some more code here. This is going to be type, type where we will say, verification code input input and we'll be adding this is going to be struct struct and we will add the code int and this is going to be session and code perfect right then let's go to user handler once again and here we will we will accept the request so here we will accept the request, right? So let's add some code to accept the request. Our request, our EQ, will be our DTO dot verification code input. So let's try to grab the request from here, right? So we will say if error uh, equal to CDX, CDX dot body parser, body parser, and here we will refer to our uh, verification code input interface, right? So this is potentially going to be struct. So let's try to refer to our request. And we will say uh, if uh, there is no any kind of error, all right? Error will be, error will be not equal nil. Then we will return something, right? So what we are going to return from here, we will say this is going to be a uh, status bad request, bad request. And we will say misses. Or please, please provide um, uh, valid, valid code, valid input. Perfect. So right now we are grabbing our request from here, right? So we are checking it out, like whether we have the the specific requirement, whatever the code it is, it is present or not. If it is not present, then we are simply returning, please provide a valid input, right? Then if everything is going well, then what we are gonna do, like we are going to say error will be there. This is going to be uh, handler.service. Then we are say, then we are gonna say like verify code. Yeah, verify code. And the code we are going to pass it on. This is going to be request.code. And uh, this is first parameter going to be ID. This is going to be user.id. And the second parameter going to be our code, request.code. Perfect. Then we will check if any kind of error is there, right? The same kind of message we can we can convey. This is going to be our status bad request, or maybe we can say internal code, or whatever the error we can receive, we can just pass it on also here. Right. So this is the way it's gonna work. Otherwise, if there is no any kind of error, then definitely we will say uh, verified successfully. Verified successfully. Verified successfully. Perfect. Perfect. So now we have covered our verify handler as well as. 
but still the job is not yet done. So let's go to verify code here, right? So here we are going to add some code where the similar way we need to update our user also, right? So let's try to add some code here. So here inside this verify code, we are going to add similar type of code from just like we did for our get verification code. So let's try to grab this piece of code, right? So here uh, we are saying like if user is verified, then we are throwing some kind of error. The similar way we are going to do here as well as because uh, if already verified, there is no need to uh, re-verify once again, right? So in this case, let's try to ID, put the ID, right? Then um we are we are going to say uh, the error only it's it's not the first parameter is not required user already verified this is covered so right now we have our check where we are verifying the user if it is already verified or not right so if it is not verified let's try to grab the user so user and error and we are gonna say like s dot repo repo dot pine user by id we will pass the id here Perfect, so now we have our user and we have our error also. So we are checking it out whether if we have any error, just please return it from here, right? If there is no any error and user is exist already, right? So let's try to check it out the, whether our code is exist or not, right? Or, or the provided code, whatever the code we are going to provide it here, that's, that code will be, uh, will be same or not. And the expiry also we need to verify, right? So in this case, let's try to uh, check where user.code not equal the code, right? If it is doesn't match, then try to return some kind of error from here, right? So in this case, this message will be uh, verification code doesn't match, right? Perfect. And the similar thing we are going to do for our time as well as we will say if time dot now now is now before then here we will say user dot expiry right right then what we are going to say we are going to say here this is going to be not not before okay and we are going to say return return this is the similar kind of error we will be putting from here right and here we need to say uh, verification uh, code expired. Yeah, code expired. Expired. Right, perfect. So, why we are checking all the fail cases here? Because you can see these are the guard functions exactly, right? So, while we are, we are dealing with the Go, all right, then Go is always uh, caring about the guard functions where we will checking it out whether we have any error or not, right? So if we have any error, then it doesn't make sense to execute the rest of all the code, right? So if we have error, then just return it from there. And if we if we don't have any error, just to move forward, right? This is how the guard guard codes are working, right? This is how the we are evaluating errors in the Go, right? So here, if everything is going well, then we need to update the user. So let's try to create the update user. The update user will be similar, just like we did for our previous uh, here just like this, right? And the similar way we are going to do. In this case, what we're gonna do, like only we are uh, care about the verify. Verify, verify it will be our true, right? True. And uh, let's go here. Uh, we can add this similar code, just like we have updated this one, right? Let's try to grab this piece of code and add it here, right? So, but what we are going to do here, uh, instead of this uh, entity, right, E, we are going to put ID. And instead of this one, this is not going to be uh, a zero. This is, we are going to say, unable to update, unable to verify. Verify user, right? Perfect. So uh, this updated user, we need to put it here instead of the user, right? Cool. Now, now everything is done. So we are successfully able to verify our code as well as. So if all those things are going well, then we are simply passing the nil here, right? Otherwise, it will throw error here, right? Perfect. So now let's go ahead here in the user handler. Let's check it out the, the flow. Right here, we are authenticating, grabbing the current user. We have request. We have our, our, our request. We are grabbing it here, right? So here, we are verifying our code by providing our user ID and the request code. 
and we are checking it out if there is any error then we're returning here and if there is no any error we are saying verified successfully perfect then verify code is is all the same like we are checking it out if user is already exist then we are finding the user then we are checking the error then we are checking all the conditions just like a uh, user code is correct and the time is not expired then we are updating the user here right then finally we are returning the uh, the error and uh, nil here cool so let's go ahead and save all the files and we are going to spin our server here spin our server here this is going to be make server perfect so now let's go to postman and let's try to uh, get the verification code once again right perfect so this is our verification code now let's go to user verify code here this endpoint and you can see this is the same endpoint which is user verify if you go here in the handler then you should supposed to see the same uh, structure here yeah uh, this is the same structure right now let's try to add this one here right and let's try to send the code but before that let's try to go to database and checking it out if yeah the verified is false this is our code and let's try to send the request here so make sure here in authorization uh, inherit auth from the parent has to be selected in the type right in the body uh, we are using uh, session here let's try to send it perfect it says verified successfully and next time if i'm going to try to send once again then it is saying like message is zero and it's saying bad request so uh, if you go here in the mm, database right let's try to refresh can you see it's verified true but somehow we need to handle this poor 400 bad request right let's go to code here here so maybe let's try to uh, log it here log dot print um, verified verified right so it has to return from here and if we go to handler then we should supposed to see this one here bad request error error dot error i think or we can just uh, maybe log log dot printf maybe error right so now let's try to um, call from once more from the postman yeah it says like user already verified so what what is the problem exactly because we are we are we were passing directly object it's not the error right perfect so now i hope you understood how this uh, verification process are working right and the similar pattern we can implement for our uh, reset password as well as where you need to extend one more functionality just like you know temporary password or code with expiry and while you are resetting the password the similar type of mechanism we need to you, we need to use just like get verification code just like we can pass some kind of the uh, temporary code right to the user with the help of some kind of email so if you go to here you to get verification code so you can see and this is we are using the sms right definitely in the next episode we are going to implement the uh, sms uh, third party packages right where we are going to introduce in the package in the next episode i'm going to show you how the packages kind of work in go all right for third party packages and here in instead of this sms maybe for reset password you can use the email right so the process will be similar just like we need to check while we are resetting our password then we need to verify that specific things right here instead of verification code right so that mechanism as a homework you can do it right but definitely in the later stage we are going to cover that one also for reset password right but nothing to worry we will cover everything right so now i hope you have enjoyed this video tutorial in the next episode we are going to implement our third party package to send the uh, sms right where we are going to send the sms to user mobile right where user can receive the code instead of this postman right so here instead of postman user can receive with the help of a uh, mobile sms and they can verify it right and after that we will be moving forward to our next section where we will be adding our our all the profile stuff and the become a seller function okay then that's all for today i'll see you in another episode bye bye